tonight to bring this word, giving honor to the Lord who is the head of my life. Yes, God. Even though sometimes it doesn't look like it, but He is. Yes, amen. Yes, God. Giving honor to my mother and my father, my kids, my friends, giving honor to Bishop in his absence, giving honor to First Lady. I come here tonight before you humble. Yes, God. I come here tonight before you bringing a word. Yes, Lord. It's not by accident that I bring this word. I'm bringing this word because it was at a point where I was going to give up. I was at a point where there were a lot of things put on me. It's something with I'm the baby of the family, but I've always felt like I had a lot of weight that I carried. I had people that call me, Nikki, can you pray for me? And then I had my own worries. And so I felt like maybe it ain't worth it Talk about it. being on this side. I know many of you are like, not you, Nikki. Yes, even me. And yes, I pray. And yes, I fast. But I come to tell you on tonight that there comes a time when everything that you've learned, when everything that's been put inside of you, it comes a time when the rubber has to hit the road. And it became a time that I had to live what I prayed about. It became a time that the many songs that I sing that God will bring you out and he's going to make it okay. It just didn't look like it in my situation. All right. But I come to tell you that I come before you because I prayed to God and I cried out. Many times I sat over there and I heard the word and I was like, Bishop is preaching just to me. But then on this other side, there were a lot of things that were weighing me down. But I come on tonight to tell you that I prayed and I fasted. Right. I come on tonight to tell you that I prayed and I fasted and I sought the Lord and I said, God, give me back that refreshing. God, give me back that woo that I used to have. All right. And I came on tonight to let you know that when Pastor called me, I had just got done praying. And I said, God, if it be your will, I said, God, if you have called me. Strengthen and encourage because I know you've done it for 
worthy and I know respect for a person, I know you can do it for somebody else. And God, I thank you for another chance. And God, I thank you and God, I bless you. And it's in your name we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The word testimonies that we see in this verse is describing the testimony of God which is the scriptures or his word. <clears throat> there is a blessing in knowing his word. I would like to share with you this story. When I was a little girl, my grandmother, Mary Pitkin, we called her Mother Pitkin, she would take me to missionary meetings, she would take me to prayer revival, she would take me to pantries. Even as a little girl, I was always in and out of the church. And it was on one day that my grandmother got a call and she said, Nikki Nicole, I want you to go with me because I got to go do some work at this lady's house. And when we get done, we'll go to Hardy's and I'll get you an ice cream cone. So naturally I was like, let's go, yeah, let's have this work. So I'm thinking she meant cooking or cleaning. But when we got there, my grandmother began to pray for this lady. She began to speak the word to this lady. And as she began to pray and speak the word to this lady, my grandmother asked her, do you want to be baptized? And the lady said, yes. And I said, oh, I know it's time to go back because we, we got the lady house. So ain't no baptism or nothing. So my grandmother said, okay. So she said, come on, Nikki Nicole. And I said, oh, we leave. Yes. So we went up the steps. And I said, no, why we going up the steps? I said, what's going on? So we went in the bathroom. And I said, why we going in the bathroom? I said, this ain't hard. It's what's going on? So my grandmother began to run some water. And I said, what is she running water? And then she began to get some oil. And she poured the oil in the water. And I said, mm, why don't you need to hurry up trying to heart? So then the lady came in the room. And I said, what is really going on? What is this lady doing in the bathroom? I said, oh, can't take no bath. I said, I'm excited for this kind of work. What is going on? <laughs> so then the elder came and the lady got in the bathtub and he baptized the lady. And after he baptized the lady, the lady came up speaking in tongues. Right. And I want to let you know that at that moment, it did something. I come to let you know that there are some of you that are waiting for God to do something in your life. You're waiting for a miracle. You're waiting for a breakthrough. You're waiting for that push that you need. But I come to tell you on tonight, that sometimes, I love Temple of Praise, I love my pastor, I love my first lady, I love all of you, but sometimes God wants to meet you in your own house. Right. Yeah. My encouragement that I got, even though I came to the Temple of Praise, even though I had people pray for me, but it was something about when I was at home by myself. It was something about when I was at home by myself and I began to seek the God that I served, that he met me. I came home tonight to tell two or three of you, stop looking for in the house for things to happen. Yes. Just because you leave the doors of Temple of Praise doesn't mean that the Holy Ghost stops there. Just because you get in your car and you drive down the street doesn't mean the Holy Ghost stops there. I come out and tell two or three of you that if you would just humble yourself in your house, just go in your closet. If your closet is too big, go in your bathroom. Go in your bathtub. But if you would just begin to get down on your knees and seek God, God said that he'll meet you where you are. He said he'll meet you in your house. Sometimes we want a whole lot of stuff, but we don't want to seek God a whole lot of time. A lot of times we think God is like Santa Claus. We make a long list and we say, well, I've been good and I've been to Bible study and I've been to prayer meeting, so I know that God and then you'll be like, well, why didn't I get it? I've done everything. I've dotted my teeth and I've dotted my eyes and I've done everything. But God said, the more you need, the more you need to seek me. The more you want, the more you need to seek me. He said, the more you need, the more you need to seek me. I'm not talking about y'all that got everything together. Let me look over here. I'm talking about two or three now.
Pentecost said, and seek him with the whole heart. The whole heart. Have you ever seen someone and they're doing something and they just have this smile on their face and you're like, they really love to do that. Do you have something that you like to do and when you do it, it gives you a comfort and a joy? It could be cooking. It could be sewing. Mm -hmm. It could be anything. But you do it with your whole heart because you love to do it. I come on tonight to let you know that God is wanting us to love him with our whole yes. heart. Yes. Not just the part that we see, but our whole heart. Yes. I had some things in me that I was like, oh, I don't like it. Ugh. And I know how to keep it tucked away. Uh -huh. But God sees my whole yes, yes, heart. Yes, yes. And it's with your whole heart that you need to see God. It's with your whole heart that you need to begin to cry out to God for that thing that you need. It's with your whole heart. Not thinking about who's beside you because sometimes we can worship and sometimes we can't really break free like we want to because people are looking so I gotta pull my shirt up because I don't want them to be revealed. But at home Come on, come on. At home, yeah. I can just be free. Yeah. At home, I can seek him with my whole heart. Yeah. At home, I can take my headband off and I can kind of fluff up my hair and I can take my shoes off and I can just say, hey, you sneak up and I need you. Yeah. We have to learn how to seek him with yeah. our whole yeah. heart. Yeah. Not with any restrictions. Okay. I need to tell you with some time that I have my door closed and they be knocking, but you can't come in because right now, seek God with my whole heart, my whole attention, my whole focus. I just want to encourage you to seek God with your whole heart. And after you have kept his word and his scriptures, and after you sought him with your whole heart, your job is not done. Your job is just beginning. Because after you know the word and you sought him with your whole heart, when you see someone that needs encouragement, you can tell them in Joshua, the first chapter, verse 9 says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And then as you go on and you see somebody else, and they look a little down. You can say, sister, 2 Corinthians, the 20th chapter, verse 17 says, you will not need to fight this battle. Position yourself. Stand still and see the salvation of God who is with you. And then somebody like, maybe Royce, you're feeling a little down. I can come to Royce and I can tell them Royce. Philippians 1 and 6 says, be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the very end. But then you're not done. That's just a few little people. So then maybe when you're on your job and somebody tells you, I need something, and you said you need something, you can tell them, well, Matthew 6 and 8 says, your father knows the things that you need before you ask him. And then you can go to somebody else and you can say, girl, I heard that you need God to really come through for you. Uh -huh. Well, Psalms 34 and 10 says, those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. And then maybe you need some things. So then you can turn to yourself and say, Psalms 24 and 1 says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. They are them that dwell therein. I'm trying to tell you that there's something about knowing God's word. When I was going through my situation, I knew a lot of songs. When I was going through my situation, I could have called first lady. When I was going through my situation, I could have called my cousin who's a pastor. When I was going through my situation, I could have called my uncle who's a bishop. When I was going through my situation, I could have called one of my ministers. 
Christian friends, when I was going through my situation, I could have called many people, but it's something about when you know the word of God. Because it's something about when you know the word of God and you can begin to quote it to yourself. And you can be saying, salvation. It's something that you can say, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. 